Welcome to another episode of Covering the Bases with Ashley. Today, I'm here with Coach Moore from Fosoria High School. So, Coach Moore, what is a little bit about your coaching background? Why did you choose softball or other sports? Well, I think uh, softball chose me. So, uh, originally after college playing football, I coached high school, so high school softball. High school football, <laughs> okay, for 18 years. And um, after Michael's class, it was my last class that I coached. Um, the daughters were coming up. And so I thought I was going to get a time to just sit back and watch them play. Next thing I know, I was asked to help. Hey, could you just help us with basketball? I said, okay, I'll help out. I thought I was helping out. Next thing you know, I ended up coaching, okay? Uh, I was assistant varsity high school basketball coach where they came through. And same thing with uh, softball. Um, I coached them in the summer and just kind of stayed with it. So. Um, and I know last year you guys didn't get to play your season because of COVID. Right. Um, so with this upcoming year, you know, I know you got a couple seniors on the team. You want to talk about them a little bit? You know, what characteristic characteristics they bring to the team that you know is really going to help out this year, and that you're really probably going to miss the upcoming season. Yeah, um, we got uh, four seniors. Uh, called Brookie Brook, uh, Mo uh, Molter. <laughs> I, I pick give them so many nicknames. I forget the real names. Okay, Brooklyn Molter, and um, she um, has yet to play um, on the varsity level. But her dedication, commitment, and just her work ethic that all the other players see, you know, is contagious and, you know, great leadership qualities. Um, so I'm hoping that she gets some time this year, you know, for her hard work and everything. Uh, Allie Sierra, again, Allie is talented. Um, uh, we're waiting on her to, you know, really bust out and have that bust out performance and everything. She can, um, you know, help us in so many ways uh, at the plate. She, um, she's one of the few people that can play every position out here. Okay, but it's just a matter of how bad she wants to play. Okay, and then uh, my two um, seniors that have lettered all four years, um, for my two uh, all-stars in senior class are Kay Brianna, my number one pitcher. She can play short, so I get, you know, play anywhere in outfield. And then Hannah, you know, obviously um, uh, coming over from Fremont and everything. That, that's my sweetheart. She, um, she, I have her catching this year. And by far, she's probably my best hitter on the team. And just and good senior leadership, great uh, sportsmanship. Both of them good students and good. They'll probably be my team captains. They don't know it yet, so I don't know if they're going to see this. But, well, it, it'll be a couple weeks. So it'll be a couple weeks. Okay, you're, you're good. Captains. Okay. <laughs> um, I know we talked a lot last year, and you were really looking forward to your upcoming season last year that you didn't yeah. have. Um, what are you looking forward to for this season? You know, how do you think you guys are going to compete against other you know teams in your league? Uh, last year, it was interesting because um, we were, I think, really loaded. We were, uh, we had just a couple key people we lost, but they were at key positions, and we were, we had pace with pretty good people at every position. So we were ready to compete and do some incredible things. This year, we're so young. We have 13 freshmen, you know, which is awesome. Yeah. Which is awesome. Awesome which for is, building. For building, yeah. yep. Uh, so obviously, some of those uh, freshmen are going to be asked to step in right now and play at the varsity level and play competitive. A lot of them have played travel ball, and so we know they have capabilities and athleticism to step in and do those things. But, again, the freshmen are going to make freshman mistakes. We just have to be patient and kind of bring them in. And right now, the biggest thing, my priority right there is just chemistry, team chemistry. If we can you know, bond with the team and give them up, I think that's going to give them a lot of confidence. What would you say, and this might be hard for you, but what would you say is your biggest accomplishment as a softball coach? Probably my biggest accomplishment as a softball coach, I would say, and I would hope it would be, um, and this is my goal every year, is to keep my promise to the parents. And, and my promise to the parents is because I have their daughters uh, hours every day. I'm around them probably more than they are themselves throughout the week. My promise to them is to help raise young girls to be young ladies, you know, and I'll take that over any win, any championship, any day of the year, is to help them in life. And so that's kind of my priority. My number one goal is to help them succeed in life. And everything else is a bonus. Which is huge, especially with how society yeah. is today. That's, yeah. that's yeah. definitely huge. Now, my favorite question to ask, uh, what is your biggest struggle coaching females, especially at this level? Probably the biggest struggle is allowing them to one um, <laughs> be females. <laughs> you know, yeah. after you got to remember, I'm a collegiate athlete, former collegiate athlete, a male playing football, and I'm a <laughs> linebacker. So I'm about intensity, yep. intensity, intensity, right? 
Um, but it's knowing them and, and understanding. The one thing I understand about girls that I do love is that if you show them that you care about them, that's when they'll care and produce on the field. If you don't show them that you care about them, that you're just a player out here, they don't care, you know. And, and so that's my thing is to let them know I care about you beyond the so game of softball. I care about you in the classroom. I care about you at home. I care about you graduating and being successful in life. And once we establish that relationship and everything, I think everything kind of falls in place like dominoes. What would you say for someone that's going to be stepping into, you know, a position like you have? What are some, you know, suggestions you can give to help work on that bond with the girls? Get to know I, I mean, you can't treat every girl the same. And any coach that thinks you can treat everybody the same, I'm going to tell you now, is an unsuccessful coach. He might be, or she might be winning in numbers of wins and losses, but they won't be winning in the game of life because everybody's different. Now, you treat everybody fairly, but you don't treat them the same. It's that simple. You treat everybody fairly, but you don't treat them the same. I will not treat a senior like I treat as a freshman. Which makes sense. Okay, <laughs> it won't happen. Okay, but I will treat them fairly. And, and that's the biggest thing is, is to establish that and let them know that. And, and this is what I like about this generation. We have to explain why. Okay, and we can't take that as being offensive or disrespectful. Nope. This is generation, we're to ask why. right? And this is a generation that their why is going to say, "Well, why?" Because make it make sense to me. Make it so I understand. Uh, when I was coming, it was don't ask questions. You know, that's disrespectful. Yeah. Uh, it's not like that no more. It's okay. why, and I and I like when they ask why because it gives me time to coach. Yeah. That's a great time to coach and explain why. And then once they get it, trust me, it's smooth sailing. After oh that. yeah. Now they understand. So I definitely always tell parents if. if you ask a coach a question about a play or about why you called it. If you can't explain it, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be coaching. Right. There's a reason you made it. You need to be able to explain it. Right. Um, and last thing, uh, Clayton did write a book this last year. It's been published and it is out on Amazon. So I'm going to let him talk to you about his book a little bit. Okay. Hey. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, free publicity here. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, as I was saying, uh, I'm a retired police officer, uh, Fox Story Police Department. Uh, 32 and a half years. I uh, tried as a sergeant. Uh, and I just got my book that came out. It's called Good Cop, Black Cop, Guilty Until Proven Innocent. As uh, a memoir, basically my career, uh, some of the things I went through, and being the first black police officer in the history of Fostoria, and just, you know, my career and the ups and downs, the good and bad, and, you know, things that have happened here in the um, city of Fostoria. What are you hoping for people when they read that book that, what do you think they, or hope that they take away from it? I hope they take away that they're, um, without giving away things in the book, that respectful dialogue is needed to make change. And that there is a difference um, and diversity needs to be um, taught and understood. And with that, if we can have that, like I said, that respectful dialogue, we can make positive changes. And we make changes. Changes don't always have to be bad. You know, if there's that communication, that dialogue, we can make it so it's going to help um, the communities, the police department, and everybody else. Because we're all one. The bottom line is, you know, we're all connected. And um, if we can have a better relationship, a better understanding, and that's the key, a better understanding and better training to have that, then I think um, it's going to, you know, catapult us forward in the right direction. Yeah, I think that's needed everywhere, you know, yeah. especially especially these days, you know, the way you communicate with somebody is so important because if you come off the wrong way, it's it can spiral real quick. Yeah, a lot of times people want to talk at other people and instead of to them. To them and, and not listen. And listen, that's, that's the key, just listen. It, it's okay to be different. Yep. And um, it's okay to disagree. Yep. Okay, but have understand. At least if you understand and know why, it's like, oh, it makes sense. And you don't have to agree with it, but at least you understand why. Yep. And with that understanding comes a better, you know, understanding of how to make things happen. The link for his book will be at the bottom of our video. Uh, last thing, I've seen 2021 scheduled. Red and for, black, man. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us on another episode of Covering the Bases with Ashley. Stay tuned for another high school coach next week.